Mahanawaste. Good morning, my relatives. My name is Quanah Parker Brightman. I'm executive director of United Native Americans. I'm also an enrolled tribal citizen of the Lakota Nation, who I represent here today. My father is, of course, Dr. Lehman Brightman, Chief Lehman Brightman of the Lakota Nation. He was awarded a war bonnet by Chief Fool's Crow 50 years ago on this day when my father led a group of activists, brave activists, who stepped up and took over this mountain peacefully, not with guns, not with violence, but just laying their bodies on the line. Some of those leaders I was hoping would be here today, but I know they're elders, and I know they're a little intimidated by this particular virus that we're dealing with, this pandemic we're dealing with right now that's been out of control for the whole world. Now, I flew 2,000 miles to come here and commemorate this event in honor of my father, my mother, and my oyate, my people. I'm very honored to be here. Now, I would like to give you a brief synopsis of who we are as UNA. We were founded in 1968 in the Greater Bay Area, San Francisco. We were involved in the takeover of Alcatraz, Wounded Knee, a couple long walks across country. We led a group one time that took over this place, Mount Rushmore, 50 years ago on this day. And that's why I came here today, to educate each and every one of you of our sovereign rights. Why is there a double standard of justice in this country? Why won't you recognize the 500 treaties that are international law? Through your constitution, the federal government is supposed to honor all treaties made with nations. Well, we have sovereign nations here, 500 tribes, and this is all of our land. From the East Coast to the West Coast, this is all of our land as indigenous people. You colonial people need to stop with your racist attacks against people of color. You need to acknowledge the fact that we're all created equal. We are all created equal here in this country. And it's time that we come together to solve these problems that we're all dealing with right now. The racism needs to stop. The double standard of justice needs to stop. The police killings of all of our people need to stop. You know, I was proud to be an American, man. Let me tell you something. I was very proud to have dual citizenship in this country. Being an American and being a Lakota citizen. I have dual citizenship, just like many of my people. And bottom line, man, I'm really grateful to be here. I'm honored to be here. But I'm also here to bring voice to what's going on in our country and to bring resolution to what's going on in our country as far as the double standard of justice and the fact that indigenous people, our sovereign rights should be recognized and enforced by the states that every one of these people reside in. Every county, every city, every city ordinance should be honoring indigenous people all around our country and around the world. My father stood up many years ago, 50 years ago and took over this mountain I was, I'm so proud of him for that. My father did so much work. He started the first international newspaper called The Warpath for Indigenous Issues. That was the first international Indian newspaper. And that was, of course, our social media back then was newspapers. And that was geared towards our sovereign rights. When we started the Native American Studies Program at UC Berkeley during the Third World Strike, that was beautiful because that created equality. You had the black, Chicano, Asian studies, and then we created the Indian studies program. Now we have thousands of Indians who've become doctors, lawyers, engineers, and mastered this oppressive system. But you won't acknowledge that. You won't acknowledge the fact that you are the racist. You need to look in the mirror and check your own egos and attitude towards other people of color. Just because we have different skin pigmentation, we have different beliefs, doesn't mean that our beliefs are wrong. But if you're going to attack us, you best believe we're going to stand up for our rights. And we have two treaties here for my nation that guarantee us 
this land as long as the grass grows, the water flows, and the sun shines. My ancestors didn't come to your people and say, hey, let's negotiate a treaty. Hey, we, we, we need to, we need to uh, you know, negotiate with you guys. No, 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 no. Your ancestors came to us. Your ancestors came to us. Now put yourself in this position. If your ancestors came to, came to you and said, hey, we want to make peace with you. We sign this treaty. We will stop warring with you. We'll stop killing your people. We will stop bothering them. We will let you live in peace. Okay, cool. That sounds good. I think all of us would definitely love that. Then, years later, they discover gold up here. Hearst, William Randolph Hearst, built the first illegal mine here in South Dakota. William Randolph Hearst, and of course, his racist, fascist regime, has been illegally mining up there for over 125 years at the home state gold mine. Now, when you think about the fact that gold is going for $4,000 an ounce, $4,000 an ounce, and you consider the fact that they stole over 100 million pounds of gold up there, think about how much money they owe us for stealing those natural resources. They were stealing those natural resources and not even giving us a percentage. Our people are living in dilapidated housing. And when it gets winter, they don't even have money for propane. They don't have money for food. And bottom line, that is sickening. I'm just using my words. That's all I'm doing is using my words. I'm not using violence. I'm not up here telling people, oh, man, you should go get some guns. And, oh, man, let's go take this over. Or, oh, let's go provoke violence against each other. No, we don't need to do that. That's something that we need to look at together is the fact that we need to come together as human beings because we're all one race and one blood and one people. It's time we begin thinking as one people. That's something that we can do today if we can just believe in what this country's principles were based on and why we are Americans. Why we celebrate this country? Why do you celebrate this country? Why are you proud to be an American? You're proud because you believe in the morals and ethics of what this country was supposed to be founded upon. Why this country came into existence. Bottom line, hey man, we really need people to just look at each other with respect and dignity. We really need to come together as a as the human race and stop all this racial war. Stop fighting with each other. Let's come together in peace and harmony and prayer because that's something all of us can believe in is prayer. If you pray for your enemy to open their ears and open their heart, if they really are Christians, if they really do practice their own spirituality, they will believe. It's not about whose religion is superior. It's not about whose you know, race is superior, any of that. It's about the fact that we're all human beings. We're here. We gotta, we gotta stand up for Mother Earth. You know, That's something that Donald Trump and his administration don't seem to understand. We all drink the same water. We all breathe the same air. We all eat almost about the same food, depending on your economic situation. But the point is, we're all just trying to make it in this world. We're all just trying to survive. We're all trying to take care of our families. We're all just trying to provide for our people. And I know that each and every one of you feel that way too when your people get attacked or your family gets attacked, man. If your family got attacked and there were hate crimes against them and they were trying to do everything to just keep you down and keep, you know, keep a boot heel over you, you know, literally standing over your neck like they did George Floyd, you would stand up. Now, we may, not, we may not have the numbers that the African-American community have because of the genocide that happened here in America many years ago. But bottom line, we still have our sovereign rights. We still have our language. We still have our culture. And we share that with you, whether you acknowledge it or not. All of our contributions. Now, when you think of food, agriculture, and medicine, Native American people have done tremendous things. The Inca, the Maya, and the Azteca actually cultivated 62% of the world's food supply. Corn, potatoes, and peanuts are the three 
foods that most people eat daily. Who, where did that come from? That came from the Inca, the Maya, and the Azteca down south. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is saying, oh, well, we're not going to recognize your indigenous rights. We're not going to allow you to come into this part of the country, even though people, indigenous people have been migrating to different ways, north to south, east to west, for hundreds of thousands of years. Literally hundreds of thousands of years. What's wrong with having the southern tribal people come up to this part of our country and actually looking for a better employment, looking for economic stability? You know, now, one of the main reasons why I'm here is to honor my father, Dr. Lehman Brightman, Chief Lehman Brightman of the Lakota Nation. <sighs> you know, I'm here to honor his legacy of his many accomplishments in advancing indigenous people globally and our rights. This is who my father was. And you can Google him and see the video footage of all the great things that he's done for us as a human race. Lehman Brightman, educator, activist, college professor, Korean War veteran, awarded the Purple Heart, U.S. Marine, and of course, a grandfather, a father, and the social change icon for American Indians. He began his journey to the spiritual world on Sunday, June 18th, 2017, at Kaiser Hospital in Walnut Creek, California. He died on June 18th, 2017, at Kaiser. Uh, he lived his life in service to his country and to the American Indian people. When he saw a wrong, he took action to correct it. Lehman Brightman was a common man in Lakota. He lived by the principles of that term in that he does not put himself above others, works as a warrior for his people and lives his life in a good way with respect and caring for the people. This was Lehman Brightman, a warrior who fought for his people, standing in defiance to defend the rights of Native Americans. Where some dream, some men dream to lead, Lehman Brightman stood up and led the people to dream and achieve. Lehman Brightman was a proud Sioux and Creek Indian who was born April 28, 1930, to Lehman Puji Brightman, a Muscogee Creek from Eufaula, Oklahoma, and my grandmother, who was Phoebe Kingman Brightman of the Cheyenne River Sioux Reservation. He died on Sunday, June 18th, Father's Day, at the age of 87. Now, it's about unity. You know, that's what I'm here to promote, is unity amongst all of us. Bottom line, we're all human beings. But we also have to recognize the fact that we have these treaties with your government. We signed these treaties with your government. Your, came, your ancestors came to us. We didn't come to y'all, okay? Put yourself in that situation. If somebody came to you and said, hey, I want to make peace with you. Okay, that sounds really great. Cool, we want peace. Well, why is it now when we ask for the enforcement of these treaties, these legally, legally binding treaties, international law, which is based on the Constitution, you look in there, why is it that we got to fight just to get these, re these treaties recognized? Why do we have to continue to march and picket and do all these things? And yes, some people out there take it to the extreme. Some people out there, they're going to get into confrontational politics. And bottom line, that doesn't really resolve things, does it? It's just like being an oppressor. But sometimes you do have to stand up and do it. I don't want our people to fight. I want unity in this country again. I want our people to acknowledge each other and love each other and to create a new world, a better world for each and every one of us. I don't like Trump's America, man, where we're fighting with each other, we're beefing with each other, people are attacking each other all the time and being racist and, you know, come on, man. This isn't the 1800s and that's my point here is I'm trying to make, is why do we have to fight? Why? Why do we have to continue to fight? Why, as Americans? That's not what, that's not what this country is about, man. And if you want to fight, hey man, that's your business. But if you attack somebody, you best believe they're gonna defend themselves. That's where we're at as indigenous people. 
We're tired of our treaty rights getting stepped on. It's like showing them a piece of paper saying, hey, this is ours. Oh, you signed this too. Oh, okay. Well, hey, here's the rental agreement. Bottom line, yeah. Instead of paying the banks, instead of paying all these banks, you know, for a mortgage, you should be paying the local indigenous tribe whose land you're occupying. That's who actually owns the land when you look at the treaty rights. Will the banks ever acknowledge that? They're actually trying to, you know, they're actually trying to get rid of you. They're actually trying to, you know, just evict you. We're not trying to evict you. We're just trying to get some respect. Think about that. Imagine if indigenous people were granted back our land. One billion acres of land was stolen from us. One billion acres of land. Think about that. And think about all the resources that have been stolen from us. Think about that. That's what we're here to claim is reparations. That's what we're here to bring voice on and to champion and to continue champion until we get justice. We're not going to stop until we get justice. Just like you guys want to say, oh, that happened 200 years ago. Well, to many of us who are dealing with post-traumatic stress because of what your people did to us, we're dealing with that now. We're trying to resolve that and heal our people as well. It's just like when people go to war, these veterans come back from war and they're dealing with PTSD. It doesn't matter what color they are, they're dealing with that. Well, for us, we've been through so many traumatic things. We've been through so much oppression and racial tension. Man, my people are so hurt right now. I'm hurt too. I'm hurt for my people. I'm very grateful and honored to be here today. Um, if there's anybody else who's indigenous, would like to come up and talk, the mic will be open. I'm gonna play a little music here in a minute. I just wanted to thank each and every one of you for coming out here today and respecting our nation, our sovereign rights. I give Opila for this beautiful day. Thank you for this gift of life. Thank you for all the blessings you give to us each and every single day on this Mother Earth and our Father Sky. Thank you for our wingeds. Thank you for our four-leggeds. Thank you for our fish. Thank you for all life that is sacred on our Mother Earth and our Father Sky. I want to thank you for bringing me back home, Tokashila, to my people's homeland. I want to thank you for allowing me to be here in a good spiritual way. I want to thank you for allowing us the space. I want to thank you for having the media come out and cover us, Tokashila, in our plight. I want to thank the National Park Services for working with us and having a good relationship, Tokashila. I want to thank all the people here who come here in a good way to listen and learn about what's going on with the Lakota Nation and our plight. I ask Tokashila that you give us the strength, courage, and fortitude to continue to fight for justice, to continue to represent our people in such a good spiritual way. I ask that you open our oppressors' minds. I ask that you open our oppressors' hearts. I ask that you help them to listen to us with their hearts and to listen to us with, in the name of humanity, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Buddha, in the name of Zen, in the name of Tokashila, Wonka Tonka, I ask that you help us, please, unite all our people. Stop this racial tension, Tokashila. I ask that you help us to honor our treaties and honor our people and restore our rightful land. Thank you. Ho Matakiyase.